video, I'm going to show you how to conduct your own therapy session, a kind of self-therapy or DIY therapy. Now, for many people, this will be all that you need to help you to deal with whatever it is you're struggling with. However, if you've been struggling with something for a while and it is impacting quite significantly on your day-to-day -day life, you might need a little bit of extra support in the form of some professional therapy in addition to this. However, this is a really good starting point. It's based on talking therapy called cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT, which has been proven to be the most effective type of treatment for a range of mental health problems, including anxiety, depression, eating disorders, OCD problems. It's also very helpful for relationship problems. Okay, there's nine steps. I'm going to take you through them now. The first step is to set aside 10 to 15 minutes once a week to conduct your self-therapy. Now, this is easier said than done because the self-care activities are often the first thing to slip when life becomes busy or challenging. So sitting down is the hardest part. If you can do that, you're halfway there. Make it part of your routine that makes it more likely that it will happen. Okay. The second step, for the second step, you're going to need something to write on. So a laptop, piece of paper, or you can do it on the notes on your phone, whatever, it doesn't matter. But this is a warm-up exercise for your mind. And in the same way that we warm up our body before we exercise to get the most out of our session, you need to warm up your mind to get the most out of your self-therapy. Often you'll come to your self-therapy with quite a negative focus and this exercise will stretch your mind to include all of your experiences, positive as well, which you will need for your self-therapy. So set a timer so you don't rush through this and spend five minutes thinking about all of the things that have gone well this week. The third step is to then list all of the things that have been bothering you this week and to rank them in order of how much distress they've been causing you. The fourth step is to take the, the problem at the top of the list. And the idea is that each week in each self-therapy, you're only going to deal with one problem. This will make self-therapy feel a little bit less daunting. But the other thing is, if you can deal with the thing at the top of your list, the thing that's bothering you the most, often, Many of the, the problems below that kind of fall into place, resolve themselves. And you know what? If they don't, they will be there waiting for you in next week's self-therapy. Okay. The fifth step is to identify the way that you're thinking about this problem. So, for example, if the problem is a, a, a meeting that's coming up or an assessment that's coming up, your thoughts might be, this is going to go terribly. I'm going to fail. I'm going to be exposed as an imposter. In the sixth step of your self-therapy, you want to identify all of the pieces of evidence you're using to support the thought, this idea that it's going to go terribly and you're going to be perceived as a failure and an imposter. So, for example, this is just how it feels because these pieces of evidence don't have to be rational. It just has to be what's in your mind. You might also be thinking, you know, I've not done this before or the last time I did this, I messed up or I often mess up. The seventh step in your self-therapy is to then counter all of these pieces of evidence. So, for example, if you're thinking, you know, it's just how I feel. I just feel it's going to go terribly. Think to yourself, do you know what? Feelings are not facts. If you're thinking, I've not done this before, you might think, well, no, that's true, but I've done similar things and I'm quite a creative and resourceful person. If you're thinking the last time this happened, I really messed up, you can think, well, okay, yeah, didn't go particularly well, but I learned a lot from that experience. So I can make sure those things don't happen again. And if you're thinking, you know, I often mess up. Maybe it's the case that that's not completely true. Maybe you've messed up or have things haven't gone particularly well sometimes, but most of the time you're able to manage yourself in these types of situations. Okay, the eighth step is to use this information that you've gathered in step seven as a foundation to think about how you would advise a friend if they came to you with a similar problem. Because it's the case that we're often much better at helping our friends with their problems than we are with ourselves because we've got a little bit of distance from their problems which makes it easier to think about them. 
The ninth and final step of your self-therapy is to make a positive and practical plan of action. So that might involve preparing but not over-preparing for the event that's coming up. Looking through your self-therapy notes when you notice yourself starting to feel quite agitated. Maybe using your breathing to switch your body into a calmer mode. And if you want to find more more out about that, you can watch my video, Three Tips to Help You Manage Anxiety. Okay, I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon.